In my previous video, I showed you how to make your own hanging sloth sign. I had some viewers ask me how I created the fur texture on the sign, so I'll be going through that in depth in this video. So let's get started. I'll just be showing this technique on the head and the face of the sloth, but you apply the same principles to the body. The head will be darker, and especially around the eyes, that will be even darker, and the little face will be a lighter color, but we're using the same paints. So the paints that I use are a mixture between Deco Art Americana and Craft Smart. Uh, the first one that I use is this Sable Brown for the face. Then I use the Honey Brown. And then I use White. I actually do a mixture between the Honey Brown and the White to get the lightest brown and then I finish off the face with white. And Craft Smart I get from Michaels and the Deco Art Paints I get from Hobby Lobby. So we want to start with that sable brown color. And this is a medium colored brown. And I'm just going to do a base coat on the face. So nothing fancy at this stage. I just spend a bit of time painting a base coat of that sable brown color. And I brush it typically from the center to the outside edges just to keep the edges clean. If you're a little bit of a messier painter, you'll want to go back and wipe those edges back down. I try to avoid it from the beginning. So now that that has a base coat, we'll let that dry for a little bit. Now we'll put a base coat on the head and I use the darker brown, which is the Mississippi Mud. And then I'll go over that with the Sable Brown using brush strokes. Then the next layer I'll use the Honey Brown. Then I'll mix the Honey Brown with the white to get a lighter, the lightest brown that I use. And the head, I don't put a final brush stroke of white. But in the eyes, I use a cocoa bean from Craftsmart for the base. And then I just do a few little brush strokes of the Mississippi mud on top of that. And that makes the area around his eyes darker than the rest of his head. Let's put that Mississippi mud on the palette. And just like we did with the face, we'll brush on this base coat. You want to make sure that you paint just inside of the score lines so that you don't see any of that raw wood peeking through when you put his little face on. Now 
Now that we've got the base coat in place, it's time to start adding those details. But first we need to locate a good brush for this. I should have used a little stiffer brush in my example, but I didn't really have one that was small enough. So the brush that I used is a little soft for what I wanted to do, but it still works. So I just found a nice round small brush and I want to start on the head and I'm going to use the sable brown for the next layer which I've already used as a base coat for the face so I'm just going to use what I already have on my palette I just load up my brush and try not to get too much on there and I just want to start making brush strokes over the base coat I come in, I kind of prop my hand up on my desk and I just make small little strokes of color. And this color is very similar to the base coat color. When it first goes on you can see it pretty well but as it dries it will kind of blend in with that base coat so don't be alarmed if you're using the same colors. So you just want to make little strokes. And the object here is not to completely fill it in. You still want some of that base coat showing through. And as we layer these different colors, you'll get different variants. So just continue around the face, brushing outward. And pay attention to the shape of the face to see which direction your brush strokes should be oriented. At this stage, I like to go ahead and fill in around the eyes. And as I stated before, I use a darker color. So I start with the cocoa bean that I get from Craftsmart. I then add that to my palette. I just use that same small paintbrush to paint a base coat of the cocoa bean around the eyes. Again, make sure that you're painting inside of those score marks so that nothing shows through when you place the face onto the head. So you don't need to be extremely precise here. The only place that I'm careful is when I get to the edge where there's no score marks and it's leading into the paint that I already put down for the head. And I just put a little bit of an overlap. I probably could have used a larger paintbrush for this. And once I have that painted, I'll go back and fill in any spots that are kind of bare or that uh, need a thicker coat. And then just let that dry. Once that has dried a bit, I'll come in with the Mississippi Mud, which I already have on my palette. 
and I'll just add a few strokes to give a little dimension. You really don't see this part as much, it's just to kind of darken that area so you don't have to be too precise. Now we can work on the face and the head at the same time. So the next layer is the honey brown. We'll add that to the palette. just as we did before, we paint on in brush strokes that honey brown color. And like I said, we add this to both the head and the face. So just brace your hand and do light feathery strokes going in the same direction that you did your previous strokes. And again, as it dries, it'll kind of darken a bit, but this is just adding layers of dimension. And <laughs> I, I dropped the brush at this point, but all's not lost, so don't be clumsy like me. So just load up the brush a little bit, feather those strokes on. If you had a little bit stiffer brush, it would probably work better. And just work your way around the piece. Now using the same color, that honey brown, we're going to add those brush strokes to the face. So using the same technique, just feather those strokes around the eyes and around the, the mouth. I find that it helps if you use your pinky to kind of stabilize your hand and lift the paintbrush up higher and then just feather it lightly. Now it's time for the next layer. So for this I'm going to mix the honey brown, which I already have on my palette, with the white to get a lighter brown, a lighter shade of brown, because I don't have a lighter shade. So I just add some white to my palette and then I'm going to mix the two colors. So I just use my paintbrush for this. I drag a little white into the brown and just keep adding white until I get the actual shade that I want. It's not important, um, you know, what the ratios are, just mix it to your liking. And you want to mix enough so that you can coat both of the head and the face with the same color that you've mixed. Once I've gotten that mixed, I just clean off my brush really well so that I have a clean brush to start with. 
and then you can start painting strokes, those feather light strokes on the head and we'll do the same to the face. And this will be the last feathering on the head, but we'll do one more color on the face. And then we'll go in with the shading. If there's an area where you're not happy with the outcome, maybe you put too many strokes in of a lighter color, then you can go back with some of your darker colors and um, kind of rebuild that up. I'm, I went back with the honey brown here and um, tried to fix what I thought was a little bit too much of the light color. Now I'll work on the face, and just like we did with the head, I just go in and put those feathery strokes. Now we'll finish off the face with white. So we just come in with a layer of white on the face only. I don't put this on the head. I want the face to be a little lighter than the head so that it uh, has more dimension. So same process as before. Okay, we're almost done. So around the face, I don't put any shading, but I do put it around the head where the face will meet the head. So I use the darkest brown that I have, which is the cocoa bean, which is the same color we put around his eyes. 
and I'm going to put some more on my palette since uh, the first batch that I used is drying up already. And I just go in with short strokes around where that score mark is. And I just go all around that area where the face will join to the head. This just gives it some shading and some more dimension. I'm still not happy with the top of his head, so I'm going to work on that a little bit more. So I'm going in with the sable brown that I used before, and I'm just going to put a few more strokes in there and kind of tone that more orangey color down. So you can play with this a little bit if you're not quite liking the way it looks. So I think I like that better. And there's just one more thing that's left to do, and that is put some black on the nose area where the nose will go on the face because his nose has little holes in them, so you'll be able to see down through to the face, and I just want that area to be black. And I find it easier just to use my paint markers, and I like to use these Posca pens. They work really well. So I just paint inside of the score lines. You don't want to get too close to them because you don't want that to show beyond the nose. So let's see how it looks together. And that's how the face will look when we put it on the head. So there's quite a bit of contrast between the face and the head. And that's what we were going for. So the technique that we used for the head is the same exact technique that we use for the body and the legs and the arms. We don't want to include the white, that's just for the face, but all of the colors that we used for the head will be used in the same way for the body. So to recap, we do a base coat of the Mississippi Mud. Then we do the feather strokes with the Sable Brown. Another layer of strokes with the Honey Brown. Then we mix the honey brown with the white for the final top strokes. And then we come back with the Mississippi mud for any of the shading that we want to do around the legs and arms and where the head meets the body. And this is what your finished product should look like. So if these videos are helpful, please consider subscribing and liking, and I will see you next time. Thanks.